Welcome Bluefield University fans. It's the homecoming special for Beyond the Ram. I'm here with the last homecoming king of Bluefield and senior leader for the football team, Demarcus Wimbush. How are you doing today, Demarcus? Doing well. How about yourself, Jackson? I'm doing good. So the first thing I have to ask you, what got you into football? Man, to be honest with you, um, my older brother started playing football and I played it for a little while, but at first I didn't like it. But um, as time went on, I got back into it when I got in the sixth grade. And from there on, I just started taking off with it. What was it like having an older brother in the sport? Um, it was definitely a challenge because he was much bigger and older than me. So of course I'm the runt. And so I'm gonna get picked on. But now that we're older, see now <laughs> I can stand toe to toe with him. So. So, of course, you make your way from Danville, Virginia, on the border, all the way up to Bluefield, Virginia, the other side of the border. Uh, why? Um, how I got to Bluefield, um, I was coaching a basketball game at the YMCA in Danville, and my uh, boss, he was telling me about this coach from Bluefield. I ain't never heard of Bluefield, ever. Um, so, he was talking to me, he was like, hey guys, just send me your film. His name was Coach Everson from Dan, Virginia. Um, and me and my boy Josh, we sent our film up and instantly the next day they called us. They was like, when can we get y'all up here for a visit? And so kind of find out, I actually had a friend, Brianna, she was coming up here for women's basketball. So we was like, should we just gonna ride with her up there, go through the tour and everything. And I came to Bluefield just like that. That's, that's pretty cool. And as we take your long journey here at Bluefield, uh, your freshman year, you had quite a weird season. I know you had, at some points, you, you felt like you wanted to quit. And you also had a pretty severe injury here, too. Yes, um, I had to face a lot of adversity because um, I was starting to learn a new program. Um, my senior year, I actually cracked my fifth minute toss on my left foot. And I ended up completely snapping it here once uh, my freshman year. Uh, the very first game, we played Pikeville. So it was a very intense game. And I was just starting to get to learn the plays and everything. And once I, once I did it, I already knew what happened. So my mental stage, I was just in a whole different place and I just didn't want to go to school or play football anymore. But hey, you see it turned out now though, so. Yeah, you're here for your 19th season. And, <laughs> uh... Yeah, everybody says that 19th century, all this other stuff. And, but no, I've been here for a long time though, longer than any other guy who's been here. So what did it mean when you got named? You're the only uh, defensive uh, All-American at Bluefield uh, this year returning. Um, what, what did that mean to you when you got that award? Um, when I first got it, I couldn't believe it. They had told me I was the first one in history. And I was like, really? I was like, that's, that's, pretty, that's pretty cool right there. Like, I really felt honored to be the first All-American. And two-time All-American now, um, trying to work on my third one. But uh, we also have some good players that are also going to try to go for it as well. But just becoming an All-American, like, that really says something about you. And when you face your opponents, they're like, oh, that's the All-American. You got to make sure you get on him and things of that sort. So, But it was definitely an honor to get it. And, of course, you've had some outstanding standout seasons. Of you. You, you got your second all-American award, and now you're the leader in sacks and tackles. You know, what are you doing to, to work towards those? I, I don't know if maybe that's your goal to get those awards or if you wanted, if that just so happened to be the case. Um, well, I can tell you this, my goal is to win games, but the uh, accolades that I get is just the process that all the work I put in and everything. And um, I just, I don't look for it, I just, go out and perform and then if I get it I get it if I don't that's fine too all I want is the dub at the end of the day so what made you come back to Bluefield for your fifth year um there were a lot of things that played a part in me coming back this year um and it was definitely a hard choice but um being with coach Cack since he's been here um I was like well I weighed out my pros and cons so then I came back here to Bluefield, and now I'm here. And how has the season been? Uh, it's been a little rough. Uh, we definitely had the roughest schedule in the NAIA. Uh, that's a proven fact. And for us to be playing like we're playing, yes, we started out kind of late. Um, if we can just finish the games, 
and play our second half games in the first half as well, we could win so many more games and we could really like put Bluefield on the map. We just have to come together as a team and not be individual and actually work together trying to get this win and beat them. And like we said, I mean, this is your, your fifth year here and you had three things that <laughs> that you didn't have any other year here. You had three interceptions against that game. What was that like? Um, the first one, I couldn't even believe it was real. I seen him. I dropped down at a 45, and I seen him, and I read his eyes, and I knew it was a wide receiver right behind me. And the simple fact of, I said, I'm just going to jump and see if I can get it because I'm, I'm a short guy, but I'm not that short. Man. <laughs> but I jumped up there, and as soon as I caught that pick, I was like, oh, snap, I got the ball in my hands. <laughs> I took off running. So um, it was just – butterflies and then on the top of that I was tired <laughs> I was tired tired <laughs> trying to run uh the quarterback end, end up tackling me um uh, homecoming you guys are going to be taking on the St. Andrews Knights and this is a team that took you took the best of you guys last year in a very close contested contest what are you guys doing to prepare for this game um uh, we're studying film we're breaking down film uh we're really keying on certain players um, trying to figure out what are their tendencies and things of that sort, and then mainly just play our game. Coach is going to have us in the right position. We just got to make the plays. All right, how do you feel about this game? This game, um, we do have a nice little battle with St. Andrews, and it's going to be almost as close as we did with Ron Hart. Um, it's going to be that type of physical game. So if we can just outmuscle them before they outmuscle us, we'll be all right. And, of course, like I said, it's homecoming. We are going right into homecoming weekend. And at the beginning of the, the show, I mentioned that you were the past homecoming king. What was it like getting homecoming king? Well, the previous year I had got Prince. So I was like, okay, I think I'm a pretty popular dude anyway. So I was like, okay, I'm not thinking I'm going to get a king. I forgot who else was running with me. Um, but uh, my friend Taylor, she had got queen. And then they yelled my name. I was like, Really? And I wasn't too excited because I don't know who we were playing. And I was just so focused on the game and just forgot that, hey, I got the homecoming king. But um, it was definitely an honor getting homecoming king. And whoever gets it this year, um, it's going to be very special. And you know what I'm saying? as long as if it's a football player, hopefully he'll get too distracted and get caught up in the moment and still stay focused for our game. Now, what would you do if they – because you know, a lot of times what they do is they make the former person bestow the previous crown on onto that person. <laughs> well, I can tell you, I can tell you one thing. He ain't getting my crown. That's my crown. I wore it. I earned it. So I'm not giving that up. If they want it, they gonna have to come get it. Uh, like I, you know, it's your fifth year. Yeah. So what are the plans after college? Uh, my plans. Hopefully, if I get a chance, I would like to get a chance and going to the CFL or NFL, at least getting a try. And then if that doesn't work out, maybe become a PE teacher or some sort of that, do some training. Or my true dream is to be a coach one day, linebackers coach. That's it, no head coach, no assistant, no defense coordinator, no nothing. Just linebacker coach, that's it. Wow. Now, if you could go play in the NFL or, or CFL, what team would you want to play for? Anything that's paying. <laughs> that's all I got. Who got them Benjamins? Who got them Benjamins? That's right. We all got them Benjamins. Uh, well, Demarcus, thank you so much for joining me. Is there anything you want to say to my viewers before I let you go? Um, I just want to thank y'all for uh, tuning in to our show. Um, y'all got to know a little bit about me. I appreciate it. Um, if you have any questions, come holler at me. I'll be around sometime. And, you know what I'm saying? I'm a, I'm a very cool person now. I put my helmet on and I turn into a different beast then. But I just want to appreciate y'all. I thank y'all. And hopefully I'm looking forward to homecoming. So in doing that, Jackson, I want to thank you for having me on your show. Um, I do appreciate it. It's a little cold today, but you know I think we're going to get through it. Well, Marcus, thank you so much. And thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, take it easy, Rams fans.